east. That is a picture of ourselves. We know this choice is before us. We're striving. The flesh weighs upon us. Old habits, weakness of will. But like these characters, we hope for an upsurge from all that is cold and inert. The second statue, the statue of King David. A sculptor in Florence tried to make a statue and he ruined it. But it was a beautiful piece of Carrara marble. One day Michelangelo passed by and saw that marble, asked that it be brought to his studio, applied his genius, his inspiration, and his skill, and brought out of it the immortal statue of David. And so though our lives have been spoiled, though they may have been hacked and ruined by circumstances or other artists, the great finger and hand of God can mold us into immortality. And finally, the Pieta. Here is a young woman, having seen her divine son crucified, and then taken down and put in her lap as a kind of a drain chalice. And yet she's not broken with grief. There's not sadness. There is peace. There is resignation to God's will. An interior calm. For she sees that sacrifice was part of the divine message to her son and to herself. And as we struggle to overcome all of the alien influences that there are in the world, those we will talk about too, as we struggle to overcome them, we're never to be cast down by trials, by discipline, by mortification. We have God with us. Christ is in our souls. You're good people. You would not be here if you were not good. And even though you're not as good as you would want to be, you've come here because you want to be better. There's a deep yearning today in the American soul for goodness and spirituality. And you manifest it. And if you bear with me during these talks, I will lead you step by step to inner peace, to inner joy and consolation. Thank you, and God love you.